Welcome to Edison TV, I'm Jane Farnham, here to explore whether the hydrogen fuel cell business, Loop Energy, has what it takes to disrupt major elements of the now rapidly emerging hydrogen economy. So first, the background. The 2015 Paris Accord delivered a seismic global political shift towards the climate. Green tech, energy innovation and fuel cell technology all moved centre stage as a whole new landscape of opportunity opened up. The greatest challenge for business was transforming the science fictions of net zero 2050 into everyday science fact. And despite decades of false dawns, scientists, technologists and commentators were united that hydrogen systems and the infrastructure required to support them could deliver a fully fledged hydrogen economy. Forecasts suggested hydrogen could grow from 2% of the global energy mix to up to 24% by 2050, which is why many investors are still on the lookout for real world hydrogen opportunities already delivering results. Enter Edison client Loop Energy with its patented eFlow technology gaining momentum and credibility with boasts of an unmatched combination of fuel efficiency, power density and durability. The stock itself is drawing an increasing amount of attention which is why we've invited Ben Nyland, Loop's president and CEO, to talk about its prospects. Hello, Ben. Hello, Jane. So, Ben, there are other well-known names in the hydrogen fuel cell market at the moment. The likes of Plug and Ballard seem to have secured the first mover advantage. What makes you think Loop Energy is in a position to end up leading the market? Well, Jane, the reality is that we're just in the very early stages of the hydrogen industry. I like to refer to the 2020s as the decade of hydrogen. <clears throat> and so as we see hydrogen progress, it's going to be with us for decades, uh, much like diesel in the early 1900s. So we're seeing that electrified platforms now are already in place. Trucking companies have developed electrified platforms, cars as well. But in the trucking business, in the bus business, uh, these vehicles tend to offer, offer insufficient range. And so that's where we need to couple the battery electric vehicles with hydrogen fuel cells. Customers, fleet operators are approaching us and approaching vehicle companies to help with that. And so you might ask, why Loop? Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, there's Ballard, Plug Power. There are others who have been in, in the place uh, longer than us. The reality is that there's some advantages to being a second mover. Uh, we get to see the failures of others and the successes of others and learn from those. And so we continue to build our business learning from others uh, with our superior technology. Our patented eFlow fuel cell architecture is a real leap forward. Uh, for customers, we can deliver up to 16% better fuel consumption, up to 90% more peak power. And because of uniform current density, we have up to 10 times better power density uniformity. So our fuel cells are just a better choice for customers and they're realizing that now. So with the momentum in the hydrogen industry, the availability of electric powertrains already in, in, uh, in the industry, our fuel cells can get adopted quickly and, uh, and they are. So do you think technical superiority is enough? Because if it were, we'd be watching Laserdiscs or Betamax videos back in the 80s. What's the actual commercial plan? How are you going to land new customers and expand revenues this year and of course beyond? Well, look, Jane, that's really exactly our outlook. Despite the com a company having the best technology, it's entirely possible for it to fall short which is why so many of our skill sets and so much of our collective efforts are trained on our sales, our marketing and manufacturing at this time. It's very much the phase of development of our businesses in one of surging growth. We have what I think will prove a winning strategy in that area. Rather than spread ourselves too thinly across multiple markets, we're currently very tightly focused on return to base, medium and heavy duty commercial vehicles. We think this is really the first killer app in the hydrogen fuel cell industry. They don't rely on any public hydrogen infrastructure like cars would, and together they make for a huge market. Today, we believe the total addressable market for commercial vehicles is around a billion dollars, but it's projected to grow to $30 billion by the year 2030. So we think the combination of our technology and our commercial approach uh, is already showing dividends. We saw a big uptick in contract win rates during 2021 when we started to offer 
turnkey solutions to convert buses, trucks, and other vehicles in days, not months. By finding ways to integrate more quickly into existing electric vehicle technology, it would become very easy to adopt, or at least to trial. And so far, at least, it seems that this is beyond the competition. So that's been very good for us. We also believe our conversion rates from trial to fleet installation will be strong. I expect in-service experience of our hydrogen solutions to strongly generate those follow-on orders. And what we're seeing when our vehicles are deployed in the field is very strong vehicle uptime numbers. And better fuel consumption, peak power, power density uniformity are being delivered in the field just as we predicted. Given this, it's hard to see how our rivals will find an effective way into accounts that we've won and, and gotten traction in. All of this is wrapped up in our 110-100 customer adoption program. The idea is that we win new business and provide each customer with a single unit for technology validation. And once that's done, the team targets selling 10 more units as an initial multi-vehicle pilot. After that, we work towards getting customers to convert to around 100 units for a commercial scale deployment. So marrying this methodical conveyor belt type approach with the advantage of our technology is already getting us a lot of traction in the market. It maximizes the value of every new win. And I genuinely think if we're not there already, we're close to being one of the new leaders in this segment. So is that segment of the market, the hydrogen solutions for return to base, medium and heavy duty transport fleets, is that the limit of Loop's ambitions? Absolutely not. No, not at all. Uh, given our technological superiority, commercial talents, we believe we can move across the whole hydrogen fuel cell solutions market. The current laser tight focus on commercial vehicles is just a way of spinning up some unstoppable momentum before we bring that velocity to bear on other parts of the market. Loop's wider mission is to prove that products using our proprietary eFlow technology have the potential to reshape the entire industry. And once our lead with return to base fleets is beyond doubt, the full automotive quality potential eFlow we brought to bear across other transport applications and beyond into stationary power, which together have an estimated total addressable market of more than $50 billion in 2030. Meanwhile, the architecture, the innovation of our architecture, which is protected by over 30 patents and many trade secrets will continue. We're very excited by what we can achieve as we continue to develop at pace our signature trapezoid plate. We really do see ourselves as capable of becoming a critical and inextricable part of the world's clean energy portfolio. To be honest, our timing seems pretty perfect with global capital markets flowing increasing levels of investment towards provable, sustainable climate technologies like never before, our time has come. I think that at long last, most of humanity shares an objective we do want to move to net zero 2050 as envisaged in Paris, from pure science fiction to everyday science fact. Okay, thanks, Ben. That's definitely not short on ambition and I do follow your logic. Now, so we can get more of an external view of the company, we have Edison analyst, James Magnus, joining us in the studio. Hi, James. Hi, Joe. So James, you've been taking a look at Loop Energy recently. Could you give us some thoughts and does it shape up to its big ambitions? Thanks, Joan. There's no question that Loop has big ambitions. Given the original flotation price, it's clear that investors seem to have understood those at the time. They also appeared to have a high degree of confidence in management's ability to substantially deliver against them. Since then, Loop's share price has obviously slipped backwards considerably, and the company is at a relatively early stage of commercialization compared to some competitors in the market. However, the potential is very much still there in fact, progress is being made, which means commercial risk is starting to reduce. In terms of progress for Loop in the next three years, are there any milestones that Ben and the team need to be delivering? I think that's an easy one, Jane. We need to see Loop setting and indeed meeting some relatively challenging objectives. The hydrogen fuel cell market is still very much up for grabs. The current market leaders do not have an unassailable grasp of it. This means that Loop is very much in the race. It seems to get an initial market traction, which helps add some cred credibility to the technology. Plus, the strategy of focusing on the return to base commercial fleet market makes sense. This is an area in which barriers to adoption for customers are relatively low. This should allow 
a loop to build scale, reduce the cost of production, and then take its products into other areas where in the coming years, we would expect to see rapidly growing demand. So loop strategy is sensible, I feel. What investors are gonna to want to see is the management team continuing to win new orders and getting a healthy slice of the return to base fleet market. Start scaling the business in a meaningful way and then capture decent proportions of other emerging fuel cell markets. To a certain extent, it's quite possible that while others spend money developing those other markets, Loop could still be a sizable beneficiary as the opportunities emerge. So thinking of it from an investor's point of view then, could you put forward some potential positives and negatives for the stock? Yes, yeah, so on the negative side, it's possible that the hydrogen fuel cell market doesn't develop as quickly as we expect, or perhaps Loop's competitors' technology offerings are unexpectedly strong. Loop is advancing commercially, but it isn't over the line just yet. In addition, the current global instabilities do not necessarily play well for new markets. However, on the positive side, hydrogen could be an important contributor to future energy security, mitigating against using fossil fuels, which are often from unstable parts of the world. Furthermore, climate change is only getting more urgent. Pandemics, wars and inflation do not slow it down. It is also worth bearing in mind that there are no viable alternatives for many of hydrogen's uses. So just as fossil fuels were dominant for more than a century, the hydrogen market could offer long-term structural growth for decades to come. Thank you, James, and thank you again to Ben. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today, but if you do want more information on Loop Energy, there are plenty of deep dive explanations and investor resources on their website. Or to arrange a meeting with Ben, reach out to us at Edison and we'll see what we can set up. Thanks again for watching.